So my name is Christopher Emden. I am an associate uh, professor of science education at Teachers College at Columbia University, where I also serve as the associate director of the Institute for Urban and Minority Education and the program director for the program in science education. And so when you hear my titles, you think, okay, this dude's a scientist and he's obviously an educator. So what the heck does he have to do with hip hop? And hip hop has everything to do, to do with science and has everything to do with education. So hip hop is the most consumed cultural artifact of our time. It is uh, the most ingested music that we've ever had in the world. It is the soundtrack to the life and experiences of young folks of color. It is, I mean, the State Department has hip hop ambassadors all across the world. Um, there are hip hop infused in television commercials to sell any product there is because it is this thing that was produced in urban spaces by these young people who had no voice and it's become this thing that's become global and worldwide. It wasn't supposed to last more than five years. Um, you know, and today um, it is still the most amazing cultural and musical artifact. So what does music have to do with education? Well, the first thing is that when we talk about hip hop, we're not just talking about music. We're talking about a culture. We're talking about a way of knowing and being and existing in the world. We're talking about rap, but we're also talking about b-boying and breakdancing and graffiti and knowledge of self. And all those things, to me, pro create the perfect pedagogical or teaching model. If you look at the elements of hip hop, they align to what should happen in the ideal classroom, where somebody can take the stage and just perform, and somebody's in a backdrop creating art through graffiti, or someone is using technology, which is just like DJing, or they're working on a knowledge of self, so they're understanding who it, it is that they, they are and what brought them to a classroom space. And so I do a project called Science Genius where we have young people use all of those elements of hip hop to express themselves in the classroom. But most importantly, um, they write raps about science content. We have rigid rubrics, we have high standards and high expectations, and kids write raps, and kids who underperform in traditional assessments will write brilliant raps, and then they'll perform those raps to their peers, and they'll compete against each other, and we create camaraderie and family and healthy competition, and we create a new generation of scientists uh, out of the hip-hop generation that was perceived to be anti-intellectual and anti-academic. And so this work um, in combining science to hip-hop has been mind-blowing and mind-boggling, and it's allowed young people to see that they are scientists. Right, that that um that a, a Galileo and a NWA had to, a lot of things in common because they both observed phenomena from their circumstances and environment. And we're trying to prove to people that what they saw mattered. Um, that a uh, Albert Einstein and a Jay Z had things in common. Um, one because of their sort of brilliance and musical acumen, but also their ability to be able to deconstruct phenomena from their environment and then create more complex things out of that. And so, to me, hip hop is science. Science is hip hop. Hip hop as a place in education and hip hop ed, hashtag hip hop ed, is a movement that's gonna bring this idea of hip hop um, to the world of education and to the world of science to um, change the way that we exist, change the way that we think, um, change the way that we think about schools and schooling.